Hello everyone, this is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be reading the notes of Barry Allen that were included in the back of Dark Crisis Big Bang. Now, you guys may not be aware of what Dark Crisis is or what Dark Crisis Big Bang is, and really you don't need to know any of that information. All you really need to know is that this is the current version of the DC Comics multiverse map. Uh, back in the day when Grant Morrison wrote Multiversity, uh, he created this map of the DC multiverse. I shouldn't say he. Uh, Grant Morrison is now non-binary. They created the multiverse map, um, which has become the definitive way that we look at the DC multiverse and all of the Earths that exist within it. Now, with the Dark Crisis event that's currently going on in DC Comics, the infinite multiverse has returned. So we no longer are stuck in a multiverse of 52, really 53 worlds. We now have an infinite multiverse. And of course, Barry Allen's notes don't cover every single Earth in the infinite multiverse, but we now have a better idea of how the multiverse has expanded. And we have designations for different Earths, as well as descriptions for different Earths. Now, before we start rattling off different Earth designations and descriptions, I'm going to read you the introduction to Barry Allen's notes. As I chart the multiverse, I'm doing my best to enumerate each parallel Earth with a specific vibrational frequency. Of particular note is Earth 33, a world in which all superheroes and their adventures exist only in comic books. As some of those comics have pointed me toward additional Earths, they have been cited in their corresponding descriptions, as well as added to my own personal comics collection in mint condition. Now, what's interesting about this, I'm pausing from his introduction right now just to kind of go on a tangent. Earth 33 is the real world, the world that I'm in, the world that you're in right now. So the implication of this is that Barry Allen recently came to our universe and collected mint condition comic books and then took them back to Earth Zero, meaning that the Flash can come to our world at any time. Now, if you've read old Flash comics from back in the day, you may already be aware that the Flash can come to the real world. But I feel like a lot of people assumed that that was like a weird, like, oh, well, old comics are kooky kind of thing and not something that Flash could do in the modern day. But clearly, Flash can supposedly come to the real world within, like, current continuity. And also, we have to keep in mind that DC has this big initiative of everything happened, so even if the Flash only ever came to our world in those old comics, uh, everything happened implies that Flash could always do that. And this is a good instance of them just straight up telling us that, yes, he still can come to the real world whenever he wants. Continuing on with his introduction. Each Earth is identified by its most noteworthy heroes, villains, or characteristics. Many, many numbers are, for now, skipped over. Worlds that require discovery or further examination, making this, I suppose, a living document that can and will be added to. Here's how it currently stands. So now that we're past just the introduction, let's get into each of these different Earth designations. Spoilers for those who have seen the multiverse map that Grant Morrison made, um, those Earths stay intact. So if you're familiar with like the first like 53 Earths or whatever, then a lot of this is gonna be super familiar to you. Um, but once we get past those, there are a lot of new Earths for us to explore together. So let's hop right in. Earth Zero, my Earth, home to the JLA and others. By the way, these notes are written from the perspective of Barry Allen of Earth Zero. That's why he says my Earth. Like I said before, our Earth is Earth 33. Earth One, younger JLA variations just starting out. Uh, and then it cites Superman Earth One et al. Earth 2, the Justice Society of America, New 52. It's interesting that he brings up, like, the New 52, but as he mentioned, he's read comics from our world. Uh, it's just funny to see that mention. Earth 3, the Crime Syndicate. Earth 4, 
variations of the question Blue Beetle Captain Adam at all. Earth 5, variations of the Shazam family, Multiversity Thunderworld Adventures. Earth 6, wildly alternate variations of Earth Zero heroes. Just imagine Stan Lee creating the DC Universe. Earth 7, destroyed soul survivor Thunderer, multiversity number one. Earth 8, Angor, home of the retaliators. Earth 9, the Tangent Heroes, DC Tangent Comics. Earth 10, the Freedom Fighters. Earth 11, reverse gendered variants of Earth Zero heroes and villains. Earth 12, a future Earth home to a young Batman Beyond. Earth 13, an Earth based on magic rather than science, home of Super Demon. Earth 14, Justice League of Assassins, Deceased, Superman Volume 4, issue number 15. I wanted to make sure that I got that right. Earth 15, home of the Cosmic Grail. Earth 16, home of celebrity sidekicks, The Just, Multiversity, The Just. Earth 17, ravaged by nuclear war in 1986, home of the Atomic Knights. By the way, the image that I'm reading this from is uh, not a very high resolution, so I find myself like squinting a little bit. And I also cannot really zoom in on this. Oh, I lied. I just successfully zoomed in. So it should be easier now for me to read through it because I found myself squinting a little bit. Uh, but this is a lot better, though I will have to zoom in and out as I go. Earth 18, frozen in Old West times, home of the Justice Riders. Frozen in Old West times. So hold on. I've never thought about the different universes that take place in different time periods as being frozen in those time periods. I just kind of assumed that when we travel to those worlds, that they're just currently in their like old west period, but eventually you could go there and they wouldn't be, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're supposed to see these worlds as being like trapped in a time period. I don't even know how that works. Uh, Earth 19, Steampunk Heroes, Gotham by Gaslight at all. Earth 20, The Society of Superheroes, Pulp Magazine style adventures. Earth 21, a JLA created during the space race, DC New Frontier. New Frontier, by the way, is really good. I've only seen the animated movie of New Frontier, but I highly recommend it. It's super awesome. Uh, Earth 22, a future Earth marred by a war that claimed most superheroes. Kingdom Come. Earth 23, home of President Calvin Ellis, aka Superman. Action Comics Volume 2, number 9 at all. Earth 24, predominantly female heroes fight World War II. DC Comics Bombshells. Earth 25, adventurer Tom Strong and Friends. Earth 26, the anthropomorphic zoo crew. Let's see. And right now I'm messing with the zoom in, zoom out. Uh, the thing I'm using is terrible. Uh, I should have like maybe taken individual pictures. So now I'm back to the fully zoomed out view. So it may be a little weird. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Earth 27, Dinosaur JLAers, the Jurassic League. Earth 28, Heroes Fight Using Mechanized War Suits, DC Mech. Earth 29, The Backward Bizarro Verse. Earth 30, Superman's rocket lands in Soviet Russia, Superman Red Sun. Earth 31, home to Leatherwing and other pirate heroes, Detective Annual number seven at all. Earth 32, random combinations of Earth Zero heroes, Batman in the Darkest Night at all. Earth 33, a world where all superheroes are fictional, Flash number 179 at all. Now, real quick, uh, because I don't really like the Flash's description of Earth-33 as being a place where all superheroes are fictional. The only reason why I feel weird about this description is because Ultra is a character that is meant to be like the real world Superman who did exist on our Earth as far as DC Comics is concerned. 
but he left our Earth and then went to Earth Zero. Or I guess at the time it would have been Earth One. I will say that these Earth designations have changed over time. So that's like a whole other like can of worms to talk about. But essentially we did have a superhero that was from our world, at least based in like DC Comics continuity. They're just not here anymore. And Green Lantern erased all evidence of them being here. But the Flash knows about Ultra. The Flash has been on adventures with Ultra before. So this isn't like a, oh, well, he would know, so why would he put it in his notes? It's like he does know, and he should probably say it's the world where Ultra is from. I, I don't know. I just find that to be like a weird, like, writer oversight. Like, I feel like the author may be, like, forgetting about Ultra, or maybe just doesn't know Ultra exists and doesn't mention them, but that's weird. Also, Superboy Prime. After a DC Comics event, Death Metal, Superboy Prime got his powers back and he returned to the real world where he still has powers. So the implication is that he's out in the real world somewhere. I don't know what he's supposed to be doing at this point in time, but you would think that the Flash, who should know about these characters, like even characters he hasn't met before, if he's just reading our world's comics, then he should know about them, right? It seems like he came here and did research. He's reading stuff like Multiversity. So, I don't know. You think that he should know really everything about his verse, because he could just read it all while he's here, and that he wouldn't leave out stuff like this. So it's really odd. But anyways, I went on a tangent. Uh, Earth-34, the Light Brigade. Earth-35, the Super Americans. Earth-36, Optiman and Friends. Earth-37, a grim world of rapid technological advancement, Batman Thrill Killer at all. Earth-38, older multi-generational Earth-0 variants, Superman and Batman generations. Earth-39, agents of wonder. Earth-40, evil counterparts of Earth-20's heroes. Earth-41, Spore, Dino Cop, Nightcracker, and others. Earth-42, Sight, Chibi, no not Sight, Cute, chibi Earth Zero counterparts. Earth 43, a vampire Justice League, Batman and Dracula, Red Rain. Earth 44, robotic JLA variants. Earth 45, creators of Super Doomsday. Earth 46, a grim young Batman with a unique, unrecognizable rogues gallery, Batman the Gargoyle of Gotham. Earth 47, the love syndicate of Dream World and the Inferior Five. Prez number one at all. Earth 48, the Forerunners, genetically engineered warriors. Earth 49, Lois Lane dies, turning Superman dark in justice. Earth 50, the tyrannical Justice Lords. Earth 51, an accelerated timeline where Earth met with a great disaster and is ruled by talking animals. Kamandi, the last boy on Earth number one at all. Earth 52, the Primate Legion Sapient Metasymbion. <laughs> Man, that was so weird to say. The Primate Legion Sapient Metasymbions. Earth 54. Humankind lands on Mars in 1960. Earth of astronaut Tommy Tomorrow. Earth 55. Zombie versions of Earth Zero Heroes. Deceased. Earth 59. Home of Wonder Woman Terra Taruna. Note, first known parallel Earth, Wonder Woman, Volume 1, issue number 59. Again, like I said, the quality of this image is not very good. So this all looks kind of blurry. Please excuse any mistakes as I continue. Uh, Earth 63, overrun with vampire counterparts of Earth Zero Heroes, DC vs. Vampires. Earth 66, Batman and Robin face exceptionally benign villains, Batman 66. Earth 93, the Dakotaverse, icon number one at all. Earth 96, teenage students, Batgirl, Bumblebee, Supergirl, Zatanna, and others. DC Superhero Girls at all. Earth 98, home of the Green Lantern, Ty Pham, Green Lantern Legacy. Earth 100, home to Teen Titans, Raven Roth, Garfield Logan, Damian Wayne, and others. Teen Titans, Raven at all. Earth 118, Medieval versions of Earth-Zero heroes, Dark Knights of Steel. Earth-124, 
home to Wonder Woman, Wonder Girl, and Wonder Tot, Wonder Woman Volume 1, issue number 124. Now, to go on a tangent, Earth-124 is really interesting because I learned about that by reading a Wonder Woman guidebook uh, on my birthday, maybe like a few years back. Uh, and they were a team made up of different versions of Wonder Woman from throughout time. So Wonder Girl, in this sense, is literally like Wonder Woman as a little girl. Wonder Tot, in this sense, is literally Wonder Woman, but as a baby. So imagine if you traveled through time and, collect, and collected different versions of yourself at different ages, and then you made a superhero team. It sounds oddly paradoxical, because you think that the oldest member of the team would be like, I remember all of these adventures, because they already happened. Um, but anyways, I just thought that was like an interesting idea for one, to make that its own Earth. Uh, and two, just to have a team like that in the first place. Just three Wonder Womans running up at you. Uh, let's see. So that Earth refers to Wonder Woman Volume 1, Issue Number 124. Earth 148. Earth Zero Counterpart Heroes and Villains and Vice Versa. World's Finest Comics, Volume 1, Issue Number 148 at all. Earth 162. Superman and later Batman divided into two separate beings. Superman Volume 1, Issue 162. Earth 183. Superman Raised by Apes, Superboy, Issue Number 183 at all. Earth 216, home of Superman Jr. and Batman Jr., World's Finest Comics, issue number 215 at all. Earth 387, no, nah, sorry. no divergences in history other than every inhabitant is a werewolf, Adventure Comics, issue number 387. Earth 789, Superman and Supergirl are Earth's only powered heroes, Batman's parents killed by the Joker. Superman 78, Batman 89. So real quick, let's talk about Earth 789. I'll probably do a separate video talking about this too. So they're essentially trying to say that Earth 789 is where the Superman films happened, where the Michael Keaton Batman films happened, and where the Supergirl film happened. They're like, those are all one universe. And then their continuation comics all also exist in that singular universe. Um, the Superman continuation comics showed that the Goonies also exist in that universe. So it's like the Goonies, Keaton, Batman, Christopher Reeve, Superman, uh, Supergirl movie shared universe. Ryan and I have talked about this before, and it's, it's a mess to try and put all of this stuff together. It really is. For one, the Keaton Batman movies, as far as I was aware eventually transition into like the Joel Schumacher Batman films. I always considered them to be one continuity. I don't know whether or not those would exist on Earth 789 or not. Uh, the Superman films are oddly like divisive in terms of continuity uh, because Superman Returns is like a sequel to the second Christopher Reeve Superman movie and it ignores the third and fourth Superman films. So it's like those films are in continuity with Superman Returns, like Superman 1 and 2. But Superman Returns is not in continuity with Superman 3 and 4. But I imagine that Superman 3 and 4 are probably in continuity with the Superman 78 comic. So I guess you wouldn't count Superman Returns to be on Earth 789. Like you wouldn't say they're the same Earth. Um, and then the uh, Donner cut of Superman 2 is like its own continuity. Like events are different in the Donner cut. So I don't know if the Donner cut connects to Superman Returns, nor do I know if it connects to like Superman 3 and Superman 4. You know what I mean? It's, it's a whole mess. Uh, so I don't know. I have mixed feelings about Earth 789 especially since the new Flash movie is going to take place on the Earth with Michael Keaton's Batman. So that implies that the Flash movie is going to take place on Earth 789, which means that Christopher Reeve's Superman should be on that Earth. 
and Supergirl should be on that Earth. And I guess also the Goonies should be on that Earth. Big mess. I don't know why they decided to do this. I feel like it's going to blow up in their face if it hasn't already. I feel like the CW Flash's Crisis on Infinite Earths event already showed us the 89 Michael Keaton verse as its own thing, separate from the Christopher Reeves like movies or whatever. But I digress. It's a messy situation all the way around, in my opinion. Next, we have Earth 898, A Justice League Without a Superman from JLA The Nail. Earth 1956, a teenage Superman, Superboy, and his dog, Crypto, are Earth's first superheroes, later home of the Super Friends. So Earth 1956. Uh, it's very interesting to have the Super Friends have their own Earth designation. This isn't the first time that that's happened. Um, but all I have to say is that the Super Friends are really messy. There's a lot of crazy concepts in Super Friends. And I would like to see more crossover between the Super Friends and Earth Zero, just because of how wild the Super Friends verse is. I feel like a lot of people who watch the Death Battle episode that was like Super Friends Aquaman versus SpongeBob came off with the impression that like the Super Friends are like really lame and that they don't have like crazy feats. But no, the Super Friends is a wild show where insane stuff happens and it's baffling to have the Super Friends try and fit within the same multiverse as everybody else. Because the stuff that you can introduce from Super Friends into main continuity, poof, it, just, it, it could break it. Anyways, continuing on from there, uh, Earth 1996, and this has gotten headlines, like this particular Earth, Earth 1996, mysterious amalgamated heroes requires further investigation. So this is referring to the amalgam verse which is owned by both Marvel and DC, where they combined DC and Marvel heroes together. This is, this is so weird for like a number of reasons. So for one, the existence of Earth 1996 implies that like Axis, is, is his name Axis or Axel? It might be Axel. I'd have to look it up. I have a magnet of them on my refrigerator. But essentially, there was a Marvel versus DC crossover that explained that the DC multiverse or DC universe, I guess, is like an entity. And the brother of the DC universe is like the Marvel universe. And these two universes were gonna fight each other. They were gonna scrap. Uh, and we got a whole bunch of like Marvel versus DC battles out of it. It was pretty entertaining. Um, and that culminated into the two universes merging into one, creating the Amalgamverse. Um, eventually, the two universes got, like, unmerged from each other. And there's this guy. His name starts with the letter A. I can't remember if his name... His name's Access. It's not Axel or Axis. It's Access. Because his power literally allows him to access both the Marvel and DC universe. By saying that the Amalgamverse exists, you're essentially saying that that Marvel DC crossover is like definitively like a canon thing. It happened because that's where the Amalgamverse comes from, which means the character Access likely is just still around coexisting in Marvel and DC. Really interesting, really interesting stuff. But this uh, led to like news headlines. People were talking about this, being like, oh, are we gonna get like a Marvel DC crossover? If anything, what this does is solidify that older crossover as having happened, which is a little universe breaking for like a number of reasons. Um, Marvel and DC crossover again, and like a JLA Avengers crossover. And I think in that one, they imply that the like previous one didn't happen. I may or may not be wrong on that. It's been a minute since I've looked at it. And unlike all the Amalgam stuff, I actually haven't read JLA Avengers all the way through. Like I didn't sit down and look at all that. So I could be wrong to say that it contradicts the previous crossover. Um, but that one, the JLA Avengers crossover is extremely canon. Like, I, it's, it's hard to debate that that one didn't happen for a number of reasons. Uh, Marvel has official handbooks that refer to the crossover, and they do so, like, vaguely. 
Like, they try not to say any DC character names, but there are, like, whole characters that exist in Marvel who need that crossover to have happened because it's, like, a part of their core history. So you can't say that, like, that one didn't happen. And then I think a cosmic egg, oddly enough, that was formed during the JLA Avengers event is like a major plot point in a DC comic as well, like post the JLA Avengers crossover. So it seems like that one needed to be a thing that happened. But it, I also believe, and I could be wrong, that that event contradicts the previous Marvel versus DC event, which honestly didn't need to have happened, right? Like, I feel like post that event occurring, you can almost ignore it somewhat. Access ended up getting like a spinoff series and that was like a short-lived thing. I think I actually read that. Um, but at the same time, it felt like if you ignore Access's existence, then it's clean. Like you can just be like, it didn't happen. Uh, whereas in this situation, I don't think you can ignore it for real. Like, this is actually like a legitimate problem. Uh, so we may be in a situation where both Marvel DC crossover events definitely happened, even though they might contradict with each other. But again, that's a whole other thing that really could have been its own video. It probably will be, we'll see. Uh, and the final Earth on the list is Earth 2020, Three Generations of Superman, Superman Volume 1, issue number 354 at all. So those are all the notes of Barry Allen going over all of the different currently charted universes in the multiverse. Uh, let me know which sounds the most interesting to you in the comment section below. And let me also know if you want me to do videos on any of these different Earths in particular. I hope that this wasn't too confusing and I'm sorry that I had trouble reading some of the names. Uh, I should have gotten a better quality image. Uh, I think I got this from like a news site that was talking about it. Uh, but thank you all once again. This is your host, friend, your boy, Jeff Lightning One Only, logging out. Peace, guys. Don't forget to hit that. Don't forget to hit that super thanks button to keep the channel going. Peace. Check it out.